Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Pokemon trading card game video. Today we've got ourselves a Lugia EX deck from the Ancient Origin set. Um, it uh, should remind you guys of another Pokemon that had been rotated out. The next Destiny's set, uh, Mewtwo EX. So the first attack is essentially the same as the X-Ball attack. Allows us to hit for 20 damage times the number of energy cards attached to both active Pokemon. So that includes our Lugia EX and whatever active Pokemon we see on the opponent's end. So this attack can hit for a whole lot of damage because we do have a lot of energy acceleration going on. But uh, potentially what we're going to be focusing on using instead is the Deep Hurricane attack. Just because it's very consistent and we're almost always going to have a stadium card at play so deep hurricane allows us to hit initially for 80 damage and an additional 70 more damage if there is a stadium card in play so you guys can see that the damage caps at a total of 150 and simultaneously it forces us to discard that stadium card so uh, we do need to increase the total damage output of that lugia ex by a little bit more how we're going to be doing that is first of all through the usage of the muscle band we are running a total of two copies of this card in our deck so that's going to allow that Lugia EX to hit for a maximum of 170 damage. Again, it still falls 10 HP short from being able to knock out several EX Pokemon and uh, quite a bit short from being able to knock out the bulk of Mega EX Pokemon that we will be encountering. However, luckily for us, we do have the... Um Fortress with the Thorned Tempest ability. So whenever we play this Pokemon from our hand to evolve one of our Pokemon, we may put one damage counter on each of our opponent's Pokemon. So this is going to allow us to really weaken up every one of our opponent's Pokemon and then ultimately, hopefully, get those big one-hit knockouts with that Lugia EX. So we are running a total of four copies of the Fortress. And essentially, after we've already put them into play, they're, uh, for the most part, pretty useless. So we can go right ahead and discard them whenever we do ultimately get rid of our own Skyfield Stadium cards, which we will be running running a total of four copies of as our respective stadium cards. Fortress can also be a pretty good attacker, um, but again, it's really dependent on whether or not we're facing any bulky Pokemon. So we could potentially make use of the Iron Crash attack, allowing us to hit for 20 damage times the number of uh, energy cards required for the opponent's active Pokemon to be able to retreat. So we may actually see Fortress a little bit in action as well, but uh, usually we'll just send it into our discard pile whenever we are done attacking with that Lugia EX. Uh, we're also running a total of three copies of the Bronzong. It has the Metal Link's ability. This is going to provide a lot of energy acceleration for that Lugia EX so that we can ideally hopefully get it going in a single turn or two. Now, unfortunately, there's no more Caldeo EX in the standard format. So, um, what this means is that we're going to have to run a couple of switch cards, which is unfortunate. I mean, uh, Caldeo EX just works really, really well. So, we are running a single copy of the Escape Rope and a single copy of the Switch, but uh, it shouldn't give us too too much of a difficult time. We're also running a total of two copies of the Shaman EX, guys. It has the setup ability. This is just for us to get the Pokemon that we need and really get our strategy going. So, Two Shaman EXs are going to serve as some pretty good draw supporter type Pokemon in our deck for the most part. So we'll be sticking with a total of two copies of this card. And the very last Pokemon that we'll be running in our deck, guys, will be the Heatran with the Steel Drop and the Steam Blast attack. Um, I just thought it would be nice to have a bit of an alternative attacker, especially, for example, if we ha if our opponent only needs to be able to draw into two prize cards to win the game. Uh, we can just bring out that Heatran. It's pretty strong, 130 HP. Uh, Steam Blast can hit for up to 130 damage as well, which is uh, pretty good. And Steel Drop can hit for up to 80 damage for a total of three energy attachments. So uh, those are going to be all of our Pokemon for the game. We are running a total of two copies of the Battle Compressor. This will allow us to get some of those Steel Energy cards into our discard pile, potentially some of our supporter cards in that discard pile as well, in case we'd like to VS Secret them out. And then those Bronze Songs could uh, ideally just retrieve those uh, discarded Metal Energy cards and then attach them to our bench Pokemon. So this is going to provide us, uh, well, it's really going to help us with the energy acceleration mechanism of our deck. We are running a single copy of the Sacred Dash, uh, just because we're running quite a few Evolution Pokemon, and in case we'd like to reuse those... Um, fortresses when we have sent them into our discard pile. Sacred Ash will allow us to recycle them and then put them back into our deck. So Sacred Ash is actually a really, really nice card and it can also help us out with respects to making use of cards such as the Seekamore um, and not have to worry too much about what Pokemon we do ultimately get into that discard pile. Uh, speaking of Seekamore, we are running a total of four copies of it uh, and keep in mind we do have two copies of the Shaman EX as well so that's actually a fair amount of draw support so I've decided to sim simply stick with a total of two copies of the Professor Birch's Observation. I think it should be pretty good for the most part. Uh, we are running a total of seven draw supporter cards in our deck so one of those cards is of course the Ace Trainer as well. Just in case our opponent happens to be winning the game uh, we can use it 
to draw six cards herself and then force the opponent to shuffle their hand back into their deck and simply draw onto three cards themselves. Um, we have the uh, Starling Megaphone as well, guys. Uh, this is mainly for us to deal with Garbodor, uh, which could give us a bit of a difficult time. Um, but again, keep in mind that with the new standard format, we actually won't be seeing any Garbodor. But for the time being, uh, the standard rotation has not just occurred in the game just yet. So we'll be running a single copy of the Starling Megaphone just in case, you know. I mean, I don't want our entire strategy to be nullified in case we do come across a Garbodor type deck. Uh, the remainder of our cards are pretty self-explanatory, guys. So I'm going to be discussing them relatively quickly. We are running a total of uh, four copies of the Ultra Ball to allow us to grab the Pokemon that we need. Two VS Seekers to reuse any of our supporter cards cards to Lysanders to lure out any of the opponent's benched Pokemon. For Skyfield Stadium cards, again, it's going to be our main Stadium card and we can ultimately use it to have a fully loaded bench and then, of course, get rid of it and get rid of Pokemon such as the Shaman Yanks, which we, which could uh, simply end up as a liability. And a total of 12 energy cards, 8 of them being Steel Energies, uh, sorry, Metal Energies and 4 of them being the Double Colors Energy. So with that, guys, let us go and find ourselves our first opponent of the day. Uh, the game's actually lagging quite a bit for me. Um, so in case you guys are wondering if it is my uh, recording software, I don't actually think it is, I'm, I think it's just the game right now. It's going a little bit slow for some reason, and we have just found ourselves our first opponent of the day. Looks like it's going to be a fire and a grass type deck. So the fire Pokemon could give um, our Bronzongs and our Heatron a run for our money, but luckily Lugia Yax is going to be the main attack of our deck, so, uh, so we should have a pretty good game for the most part. Alright, looks like we're going to start off with the Pineco. Not exactly the greatest start. I may just battle Compressor, um, a Seekamore in our discard pile, and then VS Seeker it out. Maybe the Professor Birch's Observation as well, because I don't really want to get rid of that Sacred Ash. Again, it's just a really, really useful card to hold on to. Uh, looks like we're going to be seeing an Entei as well, in combination with the Snivy. Uh, so not really sure what our opponent has in stock for us, but again, that Entei could give our Steel-type Pokemon a run for our money. So... Looks like our opponent is going to go straight ahead and start loading up that Entei. Um, so let's see what I would like to grab into. Okay, so I have the Ultra Ball. Um, you know what, I think I'm actually going to go for the uh, Seekamore. So unfortunately our Sacred Ash is going to go into the discard pile, including that Fortress as well. So unfortunately we won't be able to recycle them. But I don't think that should be too troubling for us for the most part. Uh, we, sell, we still have quite a few Bronzers and things like that in our deck. I think I'm going to go and grab onto a Lugia Yax, which again is hopefully going to be that main attacker that we'll have. Let's go and attach the double colors energy onto it. Um, and we have a steel energy card. So I'm going to go and get two more steel energy cards into our discard pile. So that is one steel energy card. Uh, let's go and look for an additional one. And then let's go and get a Seekamore into that discard pile as well. I mean, I'd love to have, uh, I mean, I could have gotten uh, rid of a Birch, Birch's Observation instead, but a Seekamore is just consistent and that it will always allow us to draw into 7 cards, so I've decided to go with that instead. Alright, so I have the Ultra Ball. Would like to bring out one of our Bronzors as well, just because they're very, very important to our deck's integrity. So I'm going to go and attach the Muscle Band onto that Lugia EX. Let's go and use that Ultra Ball. Get rid of a Lugia EX and um, a Shaman EX as well, actually. We do have a Professor Seekamore in our hand, so I don't think we're really going to need it for the most part. Let's go and grab onto that first Bronzor, lay it down into our bench, and that is going to be how we end our turn. We may actually not really end up using... All of these fortresses just because it doesn't seem uh, like our opponent is running any X Pokemon at least based on what I have seen thus far I mean we'll be able to get rid of those entities in a single attack regardless for the most part so Let's go and attach that double colors energy onto that Lugia EX. I guess we could go and stack some damage counters onto each of our opponent's Pokemon. Let's go and use that Seekamore for a brand new hand, a Pineco onto our bench. Um, Shaman EX would allow us to draw onto only a single card. I think I'm going to hold off on that for the time being. Um, but yeah, these uh, fortresses definitely are a huge, huge part of our deck. Again, um, just allows that Lugia EX to ideally get those big one-hit knockouts whenever we do make use of the deep hurricane attack. I'll probably be using the Professor Birch's Observation during our next turn. We actually even start attacking with that fortress. I'm not really sure, but I, I would, of course, definitely prefer to retreat it. Let's go and lay down that Skyfield Stadium card. I think we're going to stack some additional damage counters on both of the opponent's 
Pokemon, even though we don't really necessarily need to. But uh, let's go and use that Sycamore, uh, sorry, the Birch's Observation, and it looks like we're going to get a Tails. And okay, so we have the Switch card, so I'm going to use that to bring out that Lugia EX. Uh, let's go and stick with the Aero Ball. I'd like to keep that Skyfield Stadium card at play for now, hitting for 120 damage, and that will allow us to draw onto that first prize card. We still don't have any of our Bronzongs out just yet, but uh, to be honest, I don't really think we're going to need them. I mean, there's absolutely no way that that NT could perform a one-hit knockout on us um, unless we saw two muscle bands and a double colorless energy, which, uh, of course, <laughs> we already see that that's not the case because we have seen the opponent bring out that Rocky Helmet, only hitting us for 30 damage. That is going to be game, guys, so we'll be finding ourselves an additional opponent. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that is going to be our first battle thus far. Uh, let's hope that our next opponent puts up a bit more of a challenge and that we can really, really see that Lugia EX in action. So, uh, just kind of find ourselves an additional opponent. Again, I'm um, just waiting for those little versus points to fill up. Getting quite close to unlocking that Archie's Ace in the hole. And okay, so it looks like we're going to be facing some sort of grass type deck this time around. I'm really hoping that's not another Snivy deck. Um, again, I do apologize that our deck doesn't have... Um, the greatest rank right now because of course again I am making use of the 12 blue dolphins account so let's go and lay down all of those Pokemon into our bench uh, so that's actually a pretty good start I mean we already have two of our bronzers and a pineco and we also have a double colors energy in our hand so I'll be attaching that to that Lugia EX okay so it looks like we're gonna be facing a mill type deck this time around uh, luckily for us though those mill decks do tend to specialize on repeatedly getting rid of those energy cards and whatnot from our hand so of course we're going to see that enhanced hammer right away trick shovel as well but uh keep in mind that we do have these bronzongs so for the most part we'll be able to repeatedly grab out those discarded steel energy cards and then hopefully go for those big knockouts on the opponent's Pokemon. I've actually been seeing a lot of Bunnelby decks recently, and they've actually been performing quite well as well for the most part. Looks like we're going to see the Lysander, the opponent bringing out that Pineco, uh, and we're going to see Fortress going into that discard pile, and the double colors energy, so our opponent is already putting in a lot of work. So, um, I mean, I do have the Lysander in our hand. I think I'm going to go and get rid of the Lysander and the Steel Energy card for now. Let's go and bring out the Shaman EX to draw onto some additional cards. Um, okay, so I have the the fortress can use it to stack some uh, damage counters on each of our opponent's Pokemon. I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so let's go and do that. Uh, an additional bronzer. Yeah, you know what? I don't think any of our opponent's Pokemon will be knocking out any of our Pokemon. So I feel like one Lugia EX should be enough for the most part. So let's go and use that escape probe. Force the opponent to switch out his active Pokemon with one of his bench Pokemon. Probably going to be seeing that Robo Substitute. Yes, it looks like that is going to be the case. Uh, let's go and bring out that Lugia EX temporarily. I think I'm going to hold off on the Battle Compressor for now. Um, do we actually have any Sycamores? Okay, so it looks like I can't even access our discard pile. So I think I'm just going to go and use that Professor Birch's observation. I think it was just a Lysander that we had in our discard pile. I uh, really am not loving all of these uh, little uh, issues with respects to the PTCGO. We have the Sacred Ash. I think I'm going to save that for later just in case our opponent gets a lot of our Pokemon into that discard pile. Um, again, I can't attack with that Lugia EX just yet. I'm going to go and attach temporarily a Steel Energy card onto it. I could use the Ultra Ball, get rid of the Pine Co and the Steel Energy card. I think that's actually what I'm going to go and do. So let's go and get rid of these two cards to look for an additional Bronzong um, so that we can hopefully retreat our discarded Energy cards at a much faster rate than our opponent is able to send them into that discard pile. So one Steel Energy. Uh, let's go and attach that to Fortress. Um, you know what? I don't really think we're going to be attacking with Fortress. However, Bronzong can hit for 60 damage, so that could actually be helpful so let's go and use metal links twice to look for two steel energy cards attach them to those bronzogs and that is going to be how we end that turn so I mean we only have 29 cards remaining in our deck we're gonna see that crushing hammer shouldn't uh, be too too helpful for the opponent to repeatedly get rid of those energy cards again just because um we have the retrieval mechanism, which are the Bronzong. So we're going to see two more cards going into our discard pile. Uh, I'm going to go and make use of that Sacred Ash. Let's go and bring some of those Pokemon that our opponent got into our discard pile. Shuffle them back into our deck. I um, think I'm going to hold off on the Battle Compressor for now. I mean, how many energy cards do we actually have in our deck? Again, I can't check. I, I'm just going to go off with the Sycamore guys. Um, and finally, that Lugia X will be able to start attacking. So we're going to hit our opponent to Bunnel B for 60 damage. And that will allow us to draw onto a prize card. Yeah, so um, I mean, if we don't see some sort of draw supporter on the opponent's end, I think we may have just won the game. Uh, so it looks like they were extremely, extremely unlucky. Yeah, we're going to see an execute. At the very least, our opponent will be able to repeatedly propagate it and bring it back into their own hand. Um, so 
Uh, let's go and use the Metal Link's ability to attach an additional Steel Energy card onto that Bronzong. Again, I feel like we can actually see our Bronzongs in action, which is kind of funny, uh, because we usually don't see them as an attacker. Let's go and bring out an additional Steel Energy card attached to that Bronzong. Let's go and use that Arrow Ball, hitting our opponent's Nidkata for 60 damage and allowing us to draw to one more prize card. Uh, this may just be it, guys. Again, unless we see some sort of draw support, and no, it looks like our opponent has just lost the game. So we'll definitely be finding ourselves an additional opponent. I mean, uh, unfortunately, this time around, looks like our opponent got extremely, extremely unlucky. However, I felt like uh, we probably would have done relatively well against them anyways, just because those Bunnelbees, again, focus on energy disruption for the most part. Well, uh, the majority of Bunnelbee decks, again, uh, just to prevent us from being able to knock them out. But in our case, we had those Bronzongs, so we probably would have ended up doing quite well against them for the most part. So, found ourselves an additional opponent. Looks like it's going to be a lightning deck we'll be facing this time around. Let's go with Tails, um, and we're going to flip a Heads this time around. Usually, Tails works out quite well for me, though. But, uh, that's okay. So, I'm assuming our opponent is probably going to start off first. Um, we, we're definitely moving up through the ranks quite quickly. Um, I have been seeing some EX decks here and there now. Again, because we started off pretty much at a fresh new account, which had uh, absolutely no sort of rank whatsoever. So we're just going to wait to see what the opponent decides to do. So I'll absolutely be starting off by bringing out that Lugia EX is our active Pokemon. And I really do love the fact that it's uh, pretty energetically efficient as well. I mean, it's Aero Ball for the most part. We can often get it going in a single turn, which in our case, we will be able to... We have that double colors energy and the muscle band in our hand. All right, so we're seeing a lot of steel type Pokemon um, and we have the lightning weakness. So maybe maybe it would be good to run, um, what's it called, the Altaria in our deck as well, just to help with that weakness of that Lugia X. But we're actually running quite a few Pokemon as well, so I ultimately decided against it. I mean, I was definitely heavily considering it, but uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I should change my mind and maybe I should ultimately run a couple of Altarias in our deck. So let's go and uh, lay down a Lugia EX on our bench. Let's use that Seekmore for a brand new hand. Um, I think I'm going to hold off on that Lugia EX for now. I mean, we already have two in our bench, so let's go and use Aero Ball for 80 damage. Should be able to knock out the opponent's Thunderous EX during our next turn, unless uh, we do get paralyzed. Well, actually, he'll be able to heal a little bit as well, but with a double colors energy, uh, we should be able to hit for 120 damage. Actually, a Steel Energy card would be more than enough, because uh, the opponent Pokemon does have two lightning energy cards attached to it, so that is a okay. So, we're gonna see Crushing Hammer, eight tails, so that's kind of nice. Uh, let's hope that our Lukia EX remains alive, and um, I think we're paralyzed. Yes, yeah, so we're actually paralyzed. Uh, that Lukia EX may indeed just uh, lose its life. Um, I mean, I don't have a switch card in our hand, guys, so I'm gonna go and use that Ultra Ball first of all, get rid of two steel energy cards to look for an additional bronzer for the time being and I'm gonna go and lay that down into our bench um, I mean there is a possibility I can draw into a switch card uh, but again that would mean that this Lugia X would absolutely not be able to attack regardless of what happens so I'm gonna go and attach the double colors energy card onto that Lugia X I could go for that Seekamore um, I think that's actually what I'm gonna go and do guys I do want a little bit of consistency as opposed to take a bit of a risk with the Professor Birch's observation let's go and use that Seekamore and Alright, so no attackers yet. We're gonna bring out one more Bronzong. Let's go and bring out our very first Bronzong. Let's go and use that Metal Links to attach a Steel Energy card onto that Lugia EX. Let's see if we're actually able to win, um, despite the fact that the opponent does have the typing advantage. I'm gonna go and lay down the uh, Skyfield Stadium card as well, and that's gonna be how we end the turn. We may actually be seeing the Ace Trainer during our next turn as well, because if the opponent is able to knock out that Lugia X, which there's a pretty high likelihood that I think he will be able to, um, uh, because of course, in case he does make use of the Voltage Rush, even that Headlock that would be more than enough because if he gets a tails he paralyzes us paralyzes us if he gets a heads he knocks us out but uh, looks like we're gonna see that voltage rush instead uh, thunderous ex will allow our opponent to draw onto two prize cards ace trainer <laughs> well i mean our opponent only has three cards in their hand so it doesn't seem particularly useful but still um it's not bad by any means so uh how many pokemon do we actually have in our discard pile two lugia ex's and a bronzong i'm gonna hold off on that secret dash for now guys uh let's go and use that ace trainer for a brand new hand all right we're finally gonna get our first pineco um this stadium card is okay i mean i could discard it myself eventually so i'm gonna hold off on the skyfield stadium card for now um gonna hold off on the ultra ball as well guys let's simply go and use the metal links 
to attach a Steel Energy card onto the Pineco, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, each of our opponent's Pokemon do have two Retreat costs, so that Pineco could actually, uh, when it does ultimately evolve into that Fortress, could actually be a pretty useful Pokemon. So let's go and use Aero Ball for 120 damage, and that will... Uh, okay, so it looks like our opponent's going to quit the game. Um, you know what? Let's find ourselves one more opponent. I mean, these games have just been going by really, really quickly for the most part. We're getting a lot of versus points uh, really, really quickly as well. But I'm not really sure why opponent decided to quit the game. I mean, he did have the typing advantage, and I felt like uh, that could have actually been a pretty challenging deck for us to deal with for the most part. So, uh, we're going to be facing several different types of Pokemon this time around. Let's go with the heads this time. And, of course, it's going to be a Tails. Um, I've been quite unlucky with respects to my flips uh, recently. And, okay, so another... I feel like this time around we're definitely facing an opponent that's going to know... How to play for the most part. Let's start off with that Lugia Yax as our active Pokemon. Let's lay down an additional Lugia Yax and a Bronzor onto that bench as well. So let's see who, uh, what type of deck our opponent is going to be running. Okay, so we're seeing an Emolga, kind of unusual, an unknown. I think it's going to be a Vespiqueen deck, guys, um, because of course that Emolga has absolutely no retreat cost and it's probably mainly used for the call for family attack just to try and load up our opponent's bench with those respective combis, I think. So. I'm going to be seeing a deep battle compressor. I mean, unknown is almost always usually an indicator that it's going to be a Vespiqueen deck. Not not all the time, but uh, it usually is a pretty good indication. So we're going to see Tropius and Mulga going into that discard pile. A Hypnotoxic Laser. Absolutely not a card that I would have expected to see. So uh, let's just press don't show this again. And okay, so that's going to be the end for the opponent's turn. I have the Seekamore in our hand. I'll absolutely be making use of that, guys. So let's go and use the Escape Probe. Force the opponent to bring out one of his unknowns. Now, the nice thing about unknown is that it can't make use of the Farewell Letter when it is the opponent's active Pokemon. So we could take advantage of that. I mean, that could allow us to stall for a little bit of time in case we don't get... Uh, yeah, so in case we're not able to attack. So I'm going to go and lay down that Pineco. Let's go and attach a Steel Energy card onto that Lugia EX. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to bring out that Shaman EX as well. So let's draw into some additional cards. Heatran... Um, no, you know what, I think I'd rather save the slot for an additional Bronzor for the time being, so let us go and end the turn. Uh, we'll be able to stack some damage counters on each of our opponent's Pokemon during our next turn, in case we want to. Uh, so we're going to see the first unknown going into that discard pile, the Trainer's Mail, and that will allow the opponent to draw onto that Team Flare Grunt. He's going to be making use of it, okay. So now we're back to square one, but if I still get a Double Cutter's Energy, I could hit for up to uh, 6, well, Actually, 80 damage, which is more than enough to knock out the opponent's Mulga. Okay, now we're going to be seeing the Starling Megaphone. Uh, but we do have a Muscle Band in our hand as well. So, we could... Okay, no, so, sorry. Call for Family, of course, allows the opponent to look for some additional Pokemon. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's go and bring out that first Fortress and stack some damage counters on the opponent's Pokemon. I'm going to go and attach the Muscle Band as well. Um... We don't have the Skyfield Stadium card, but there's a pretty good likelihood that we will eventually draw it. So I'm going to go and bring out a Pineco. Uh, let's go and use that Seekamore again. I do want that consistency. Awesome. We finally have that first Bronzong. Uh, I will definitely be making use of its special ability as well to retrieve some energy cards. So let's go and lay down that Skyfield Stadium card. E Bronzor. I'd love to draw to a DCE, so I'm going to hold off on the Steel Energy card for now. Let's go and lay down that Shaman EX, draw to some additional cards. Um, an Ultra Ball. Uh, I mean, at this point, that's not really going to be all that helpful. So we're getting a little bit unlucky in terms of drawing onto the DCE. So I'm going to go and attach a Steel Energy card onto that Lugia EX on our bench. Let's go and attach a Steel Energy card onto that active Lugia EX as well. And unfortunately, that's going to have to be how we end our turn, guys. Uh, we finally seen that first combi make its appearance. Again, in Unknown, going into that discard pile. So our opponent already has 5 Pokemon in that discard pile. So that the Vespi Queen can hit for a decent amount of damage. We're going to see an additional Steel Energy card, the Force of Giant Plants. That's okay, we can go and get rid of the Shaman EXs and send them into that discard pile. Um, I don't, yeah, so our opponent actually doesn't have any draw supporters just yet. Again, call for family. It's allowing our opponent to slowly get rid of those Pokemon and send them into that discard pile. Um, okay, I think I'm going to go for the Professor Birch's observation this time around. Let's see if we can get a DCE finally. And awesome, looks like we're finally going to draw into that. Uh, I could get rid of the opponent's uh, stadium card, but I mean, he's already had those combis on his bench for one turn, and I, I could use it as discard fodder for my uh, deep hurricane attack, so I'm going to hold off on that. Let's go and use Metal Links, attach a Steel Energy card onto that benched Lugia EX. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's actually going to be it for the most part. Let's go and use Arrow Ball, hitting that Emolga for 80 damage, and that will allow us to snatch up one prize card. We're finally going to see the combi make its appearance. Let's see if the opponent has a Vespi Queen. Okay, that uh, unknown is going to go into that discard pile. Trainer's Mail, I think our opponent's getting pretty unlucky for the most part. We're definitely going to be seeing that Acro Bike in action as well. Uh, so it's definitely a slightly different build than the one I had going. Uh, because I've made one specifically with the evolutions, uh, which actually worked out quite well. So we're going to see that Hypnotoxic Laser, a heads that is going to put that Lugia Yex to sleep, and the Enhanced Hammer as well. Our opponent just repeatedly keeps getting rid of those energy cards attached to our Pokemon. We're going to be seeing the Muscle Band. Uh, the Vespi Queen, I think, may just make its appearance, guys. Or the opponent may be making use of some sort of draw supporter, such as the Sycamore, and uh, hope that they draw onto that Vespi Queen. So let's see. Okay, we're going to see that Ultra Ball. Not enough Pokemon in the opponent's discard pile to actually perform that one-hit knockout just yet, though. So, um, could hit us for quite a bit of damage, but our Lugia EX should be able to survive that very first attack. So, uh, again, just pac patiently waiting for our opponent to draw onto that Pokemon. Maybe he's actually going to look for a Shaman EX as well. Uh, no, and instead it looks like it is going to be that very first Vespi Queen. Again, uh, we should be able to survive. Yes, yeah, so 110 damage. And it looks like we're going to remain asleep. Okay, so we should still... Okay, it looks like we're actually going to draw onto that Switch card. So that is quite nice. I'm going to go and Battle Compressor a couple of Steel Energy cards into that discard pile. So that uh, those Bronzongs can become a little bit more useful. So that is two Steel Energy cards in our discard pile. Uh, let's actually go and send three. Um, I don't really see any sort of issues with that. Let's go and use Metal Links to attach a Steel Energy card onto that Lugia EX. Let's go and attach an additional Steel Energy card onto it as well. I'm going to go and switch in to that Lugia EX. We're actually going to go and get rid of the opponent's Forest of Giant Plants. Could definitely help him out with respect to bringing out some additional Vespi Queens. Let's go and use Deep Hurricane, 150 damage, and simultaneously get rid of that Stadium card. Okay, so things are looking pretty good for us. Not so good for our opponent. I mean, uh, now that Vespi Queen can hit for 110 damage, with a Muscle Band, that would be 130 damage. Still still falling short of uh, being able to knock out that Lugia X. All right, we're going to see Shaman EX as well. Our opponent getting dangerously close to decking out at this point. We're going to see an Acrobike as well. So he does have to be a little bit careful from here on out. Um, six cards remaining now, guys. Still not enough Pokemon in that discard pile, though, so... Let me take a look, and yes, so I believe it's 130 damage at this point that our opponent is only able to hit for, so our Lugia EX would still be able to survive with a little bit of HP remaining. Uh, so things are, again, not looking all that great for our opponent for the most part. I'll definitely be getting rid of that Stadium card, and I think at this point I'd like to bring out an additional Lugia EX as well, and awesome, looks like we are going to draw into one. Uh, let's go and use Metal Links to attach a Steel Energy card on to that Lugia EX. A Double Cutters Energy as well. This is going to guarantee us that knockout against that Vespi Queen. Let's go and bring out a Pineco. Uh, the reason that I'm bringing this out is because I'd like to retreat those Lugia EXs, and if the opponent gets rid of that Skyfield Stadium card, uh, then we can go right ahead and discard these badly damaged Pokemon. Let's go and use that VS Seeker. Uh, Seekamore, yes, is absolutely the card that I will be looking for. Let's go and make use of it. Uh, we have an additional Bronzong. I'll be bringing that out. Let's go and use that Metal Links to attach an additional Steel Energy card on to that Lugia EX. Um, uh, yeah, I guess let's go and bring out that Fortress as well. Stack some damage counters on the opponent's Pokemon. Let's go and retreat. Bring out that Lugia EX and then use the Deep Hurricane to knock out that Vespi Queen and simultaneously get rid of those two Pokemon which then became liabilities for us. So that's what I really really like about the Deep Hurricane attack in combination with the Skyfield Stadium card. I mean as you guys can see our opponent was uh, dangerously close to drawing onto four prize cards. Those Lugia EXs had just a small amount of HP each but uh, I completely got rid of that and it looks like that forced our opponent to concede the game. So that is going to be it guys. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again Lugia EX is a Pokemon that I think is absolutely absolutely phenomenal. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also be sure to check out those videos, my previous video and a random video as well in those annotations and those little cards. And that is going to be it guys. Again, thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.